An answer to a question that nobody asked. Why, what is this? Why doesn't it work? Hmm, let's go find out, shall we? In the original Trown, the original Trown was made out of some kind of nine, late 1950s thermoplastic and the actual inside of the plastic bore the heat of combustion and lined up the projectile and there was a copper, copper brass, insert to hold a small pistol primer. In our particular case, a modern molded 3D printed sleeve isn't going to put up with all that heat not the stuff we had. So what we've done is reverse engineered this trown. We took a photograph of it and then Bruno was able to go all the way down and make a CAD file out of it, complete that over into a CAM file and now our little, um, our little slave gizmo over there is popping away. So then when we get the trown printed, a 357 Magnum case that has been prepared by turning the rim off of it. We turn the rim off is then pressed up inside this after we've reamed it out we were we ream it the last couple of thousandths of an inch to get it exactly round and it's held in there with friction so all we're 3d printing is a an adapter that allows the standard 38 special casing to be run inside a pretty unique gun these trowns are not cheap i've heard them go from anywhere from 10 to 100 dollars a piece for these rounds and I intend to shoot more than one round and I'm sure Zach not paying 100 bucks for it. For a projectile, there's a difference between firing a gun and shooting it. I have no intention of taking this thing up to full pressure. So for a projectile, we know in a 357, um, in a 357 gun, a 38 caliber gun shoots a 357 projectile. These are 36 caliber muzzleloader balls that mic out at about 375. I'm going to run these through a um, just a piece of pipe and kind of swage the edges off of them. So we'll have a really short cylinder with hemispherical ends. The reason why I selected a round ball is that's the lowest weight projectile I can get for caliber. That has the lowest sectional density of any projectile out there. And we'll, we'll run this thing at about maybe seven or 800 feet per second. I have no intention of stretching this gun out. We'd like to shoot it, maybe get a little bit of, little bit of video of us having done it. And... Um, have all the pieces remain along with the rest of the pieces. So I haven't even put the inserts in these and I've trimmed all these. This is a very length critical weapon, very length critical because the headspace is actually set by how long the trown is. I've screwed the action into the port side grip plate so that we can observe the weapon running without my hands in the way. It'll also single action. Okay, and this is a magazine, just like a double stack mag. So to load this thing, and I'm not real proficient at it, the trown was selected and pushed in, and there's a little spring that pops out and hangs onto that thing. And it appears like you stick it in till it's flat and you shove it down. And as we're doing that, let me get one or two more of them in here. As we're doing that, you can see that the magazine is beginning to fill up and I have not had all I have not mastered the manual of arms of this gun yet so just humor me here because I'm there is a way you have to load it in order to get it all to sit in there right and I haven't mastered it yet because to be really honest it's the first time I've ever held one of these things so I'm trying just like y'all are okay so right now I've got what nine rounds in this thing I think yeah, I'm not I don't I'm not a real master at loading it. When you when you shut it, that round's supposed to come up and then there's a window right here. Whoop, that's supposed to show it coming by. Hang on a minute, I'll see if I can't show you that. You see right there how it's turning white? That's letting you know that a live round is coming by and that there would be a live round up under in the chamber right now. So as you pull the trigger, the hammer would come down, the next round pops up, and then as you pull this, that round is extracted and the next one is run in. So as you're running this, the magazine is emptying out and depleting rounds out the starboard side of the gun until you run dry. 
interesting design. It's interesting. It's going to be neat to see how it holds up, honestly. Yeah, so let's get on with that. Here, enjoy a small musical interlude. <laughs> I did not want to take this gun all the way apart, but in the, in the process of developing this ammo, we have light firing pinstrikes, we had a lot of things, and we really got to looking at this gun, and there was an orange ooze coming out of the inside, so there was patina oozing out all over the inside of this. So we tore it down and figured, what the heck, um, I've never seen a Dartic naked, and I highly doubt that any of you have, so let's go here. Major components in this, in this deal are the hammer group, this is the sear disconnector um, trigger bar. That is what rotates the cylinder. Well, actually, I'm going to call this a chamber. And this is the chamber. And actually, I've got this backwards. Bang. So I'm going to try to make all this fit here and show you how all this interrelates as best as I can tell. Okay. There are several things going on in this piece of equipment. First of all, this is a chamber. It's really not a cylinder. So the tround is going to sit in there like that. And the tround is occupying, um, the, 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 the chamber occupies the bottom two walls here and here. The top wall of this is actually the inside of the, the, actually the inside of the frame. So this thing has a really thick top strap because the tround is up against the inside of it. All right. One thing while I've got the frame here in view is I'm going to flip it over and we're going to be 90 degrees out. Actually, no, we're going to be correct right now. This gizmo right here, this is what unlocks the cylinder. And you can see that bar on the top moving back and forth. That locks the chamber. And also, this is an anti-rotation detent right here. So this allows the chamber to rotate top towards you, which would be clockwise when viewed from the rear, but does not allow it to rotate back counterclockwise. So it's neat to know that that's in there and it's kind of important. And after that, it becomes irrelevant. So let's move all this out of the way here for a moment. This is the sear. This knife edge right here is the actual sear edge and it engages on, let me find it. There is a cut right there. You can see the cut and that whole thing. Give me a focus there, Bruno. Pull in right, right there, right there, yeah. That's the cut. This is the bypass that allows for double action. So the sear can push the hammer back to full cock and then when this comes out of the way, that rotates back. But if you wanted to pull it through double action, it would push on that detent until it came all the way up, rode off, and then it would pop back around again. So this setup is set up almost exactly like a Smith & Wesson Colt. Just about anybody that's ever done a single double uh, a revolver has used this particular setup. Okay, so let me move that out of the way here for a moment. The sear piece is driven on a square hole and this has a square bar that drives it right here. I'm working out of a monitor, so just bear with me. That has a square bar that drives it. This will fit down in here, and the purpose of this notch here will become evident. There's something that rides up and down on this pin, which is the, the um, that's the rebound. There is a rebound set up in this, but um, I'll show you that in a little bit. This is pinned up here so that as the trigger moves back and forth, this moves. And as you can see, the lock, 
So I want you to focus your attention right here. You can see that the lock, when we pull forward on this, the first thing that happens when we, when the trigger gets pulled to the rear is the, it unlocks. So like any Smith & Wesson or revolver timing, let me drop this pin in here because that's where it belongs. That pin will drive it. Like any correct revolver timing, bolt pickup should be instantaneous. The moment the trigger begins to move, the bolt should pick up. And it does that in this case. And then when it comes all the way to the rear and the chamber begins to rotate, this will slip off. That'll slip off. And then when the trigger comes back forward again, it grabs this incline plane and this whole thing slides up and snaps over. So it comes forward and then it slides up. It slides forward and it comes up. So this is exactly how a Smith & Wesson bolts work. And it's, it's doing other things, but it's the exact function that's available inside of a Smith & Wesson revolver. Here we have the hammer, firing pin, which protrudes through. This thing is really weird. It cocks up in the air like that, and as it comes down, it gets to the hole, and then it pivots. And let me get my hands out of the way. It pivots and goes into the firing pin hole like that, and then it retracts and comes back up. The really intriguing part of this mess is how we're going to rotate this chamber so in this chamber here and i'm going to slide over to the center and show you this really quick there is a three position detent i guess you'd call this a paul wheel so to be able to get this thing in and out of the frame it has to be flush so you can't have the um the star wheel protruding like you would have say on a conventional five or six round revolver cylinder this has to be flush because the aperture for it is smooth so since the aperture for this is smooth, it has to be able to slice. So you have to be able to insert the chamber and then shove all this in from the rear end. Okay, so now that we know that's going to happen, you also have to have the ability to rotate this, to have the trigger rotate backwards. So on this part right here, you have a matching corresponding three wing gizmo that sits up inside there. And then this whole thing is spring loaded in like this. So it has the ability, here we go, it has the ability to rotate up and snap over, bank, it snaps in, and then it can rotate up, snaps in, rotate, snaps in. So you can hear that, right? Now to drive all this from the hammer being cocked, we've got to come around the corner, and that's where this gizmo, you see the teeth on that? That's where this gizmo comes in. This thing is going to ride on the cylinder screw hole right here right here so when the hammer is inside here the hammer is actually riding in the middle of all this what the heck i'll just i want to demonstrate it first so let me get this timed right as you cock the hammer this is rotating this is a 90 degree um i guess you'd call it a spur gear it's a 90 degree gear so when the hammer is cocked to the rear the cylinder is going to rotate when viewed from the direction of my index finger towards this cylinder is going to rotate as you cock the hammer it's going to rotate clockwise all of that that entire blivet let me get this put together for you oh uh, gotta have that spacer but that's later okay hang on one second here because my fingers just are not going to fit with all the other crap that's got to happen here this whole thing get up in there you little little bugger yeah bugger that whole thing is going to be inside the frame like that. So as the hammer is cocked, ah, having a low dexterity day to day, this has got to be the other way too. You're learning everything. I've never had a dartic before, and I highly doubt after this experience I will ever have another one apart. That slides up in there. So is the hammer. Jesus, I just about had it. There we go. That will engage right there. Okay, time for the demonstration. As the hammer is cocked, that mass right there will rotate this. And I'm trying to get my fingers that way. There we go. That whole thing's going to rotate like that. There it is. There's the correct relationship. Bang, 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 like that. Okay? All of that mess sits inside that cassette like this. Up inside the up inside the guy. Now there's some other things going on while all this is happening. Our trigger transfer bar. Let's get this in. Let's get this out of the way. Our transfer bar is sliding up and down on the inside of that pin right there. 
So as you're pulling the trigger, there, and that's not a transfer bar, it's a rebound. This thing is sliding up and down inside that mortise. And because it's sliding up and down inside that mortise, it's moving this, let me get right back on it here, right there. This piece right here, this cutout in the frame right here is engaging on this bar back here. Don't worry about focusing on it, that bar right there. So when you release the trigger and, this, and the trigger comes back forward, you can see how this high spot right here is sliding into this aperture and is actually camming the hammer backwards and camming the firing pin back off of the primer and allowing the chamber to rotate the next time the trigger comes backwards again. Okay, this thing is a blivet. And I'm going to tell you what, five seconds with a stone and I can destroy a priceless collectible. Not kidding. This is not a good gun to allow the faint of heart to go roaming around inside of with a file. So the last thing we're going to look at here is 38 caliber um, chamber sits inside there and it comes all the way up. And you have to get the bolt out of the way and you got to kind of play with it a little bit and get it up inside there. This is about as close to a cylinder base pin as you're going to get. This is going to come in um, from the front and then that Paul gizmo that sat on here when this pushes out of the way you've got that stud sticking out and that's going to stick into the back. So the chamber is kind of is kind of uh, barbecue skewered like that. So this screw runs in and does two things. One, it allows this uh, chamber to pivot, but if you look here, you'll see this cutout. You'll see this divot. It kind of looks, like uh, looks like a Mauser trigger guard screw. That divot is going to engage sliding down. That divot is going to engage over this boss right here between these two cutouts. So the point's going to be, you've got this thing sitting in there, and let me rotate that around. This, You'll put the barrel in and that will slide in that way. And then when you rotate this screw the rest of the way, the last three quarters of a turn, this will draw this entire assembly that way. So that's the lock. You unlock it, pull the barrel out, put your carbine barrel in it, do whatever you want. I'm understood there's a lot of variance to this. This is the Dartic Model 1500. This goes in. That rotates clockwise and sucks that up against the barrel shoulder, up against the uh, milled recess up in the, uh, up in the housing up here. That goes into the milled housing. So that's essentially going to be plugged in right there, and you're going to have this space-age looking, I want my jet pack. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, the, really, the only thing that's left here is possibly the fact that this entire housing was fabricated by Alcoa aluminum and it was obviously a casting it looks like a casting we covered that before when you look up inside of it you can even see and I'm going to highlight it right here you can see right there the Alcoa name and then there's a little bit of milling that got done in order to make this to be the right depth I'm assuming this is a magazine and all the trounce fit up inside this magazine right here and you can put i think 12 rounds in this thing so this is a 12 round revolving chamber i don't even i'm i'm hesitant to call it a revolver um mm, yeah we'll call it a revolver well we're gonna put this sucker back together again and when we get done playing with the ammo i'll let you know the ammo for this peg may wind up being its own episode all by itself recording Go. Oh. Well, I got hit by something. Wow, a really unique piece of kit. And again, as I said in the beginning, an answer to a question that no one had asked. Thank you for coming down the rabbit hole with this old carbon-based life form. And as always, it's been a pleasure. Catch you on the flip side. <laughs>